action. Again and again and again, welcome to Adam and Tessa's channel. In today's video, we're going to show you tips on how to travel to Greece. And don't miss out until the end of the video, we're gonna show you the best tip, how to travel for free and stay whatever you go. And that tip works all over the world, not just for Greece. But stay tuned because we've got how to pack, how to get around, and even how to stay connected with the internet in Greece. I'm so excited to share with you guys all these tips. Let's get into the video. First, how to get around in Greece. You definitely have to rent some kind of vehicle because mm -hmm. the views are beautiful, half the fun is driving and getting around the island. Yes, and even though the island that we chose to go to, Kerfu, there is no public transportation. I mean, there are some around downtown, but to go to like different beaches and explore the, the island, it was very hard. You have to have a vehicle with you. It's very worth it. Yes. Now, the main dilemma is whether to get a scooter or rent a car. For me, I really wanted to rent a scooter. It's to just more fun and I've tried it like in so many countries, but Tessa said, no, we have to rent a car because it's better. It will like have all of our stuff in it and also for the shade and AC. Yeah, so a plus with a scooter is you get to see the views, you're on winding hills. If you don't have a lot of stuff with you, a scooter would be great. Um, the pluses of a vehicle or a car is that you get a hold more stuff that you take to beaches and, other, and hiking. And for me, I liked getting a break from the sun. Mm -hmm. So instead of being outside literally the whole day, we got some breaks when we would go from beach to beach and get some shade time too. Yeah. So you have to manage and plan and book your car before you get to Greece so you know which car are you going to have and where are you going to pick it up from. We rented a car from the airport so the company came and picked us up from the airport right when we got there and took us to their office. We got the car and we started our journey. It was pretty cool. Um, One update for um, 2023 and 2024 and on is that now you do not need an international driver's license. If you're from the US then simply your state driver's license is what um, companies want yes. in order to rent a vehicle. So I got mis misleading to that. Yeah, we watched I, other YouTube videos that said you absolutely have to have an international driver's license. Because they're not going to give you the car if you don't have international. And I was like, all right, cool. So I got an international one. And when I got there, they said, no, we can use your American international driver's license. I was like, I got this for nothing. Yeah, don't waste your money mm -hmm. um, going for Greece anymore. Yes, but I'm, I'm sure I would be able to use it or I would have to use it somewhere else. But in Greece, if you're planning into only Greece, then based on experience, you don't really have to have international driving lessons. Tip number two, how to stay connected to the internet in Greece. So I got uh, Hawaii, Hawaii we? <laughs> Here it is. I got this from Amazon. It was probably 50 bucks. Um, and that was the first time actually I used it. It's like you put the SIM card uh, to like from like local, whatever you go, like local SIM card from the country that you go to. And it just works perfect. We um, got Vodafone SIM card from um, in Greece. And we had like internet, like unlimited all the time, whatever. We went and it was really, really helpful. So the pluses to this type specific, um, this specific Wi-Fi device is that you use local SIM cards. So it's just like putting a SIM card into your phone, except we, both of our phones could use this and we didn't have to sacrifice our service or our numbers or getting um, our like activation codes yes. and everything, we could still get that while using Wi-Fi and staying connected. 
Um, this is different than m almost any other mobile internet device you find on Amazon because most other ones make you pay like a monthly service fee. It's like a mobile hotspot. Mm -hmm. um, and that costs a, a lot more than this where you pay the local SIM card rates, which is usually cheaper than any kind of international data plan. Exactly. So we really recommend it. It's very helpful. Tip number three is what to pack. A lot of the stuff surrounds um, going to the beach, so items that will really help out there. Yes. First thing, water shoes. You have to have water shoes in Greece. A lot of the beaches are rocky beaches, which make for beautiful water. However, it's very hard on your feet. Mm -hmm. We didn't see a lot of people wearing water shoes, but there were definitely a few beaches where it was really Rocked. important. <laughs> you have to have it. And the, the rocks get super hot and you're like, you're feeling, ah, it can't. So that will protect it. The second thing is a goggle. So you have to have one of these to see the underwater. So pretty. We met a family who didn't yeah. bring theirs because they thought there wasn't good snorkeling opportunities in yes. Greece. And they were sad when we saw things like jellyfish and was... corals and, and different things that maybe you wouldn't expect. But there were several beaches where we saw different fish and corals. Yes. So it was definitely worth it. Very, to very animals. important. You have to have this in Greece. The water were like super, super clear that you would enjoy it a lot. And the last thing, oh, phone cover underwater. So to take cool pictures, videos, and if you don't want to take pictures and videos of yourself, you can take it like for under like water for fishes and there are like so many cool, beautiful stuff under there. So it was very helpful to have that so you can take pictures. Another thing you might consider packing is hiking gear. Yes. We didn't pack any hiking gear, but there were plenty of opportunities where we could have yes. hiked more mm -hmm. and had beautiful views um, if we had done that. have at least one if not more islands that you can book day trips to go see but we recommend not booking it ahead of your trip but right when you get to Greece that's when you want to book because you want to be careful of which days are windy sometimes they'll cancel yeah. if it's too windy um, to go to other islands so if you get there right when you arrive and then you try book, to book it and there's also like so many companies in Curfew downtown that you can like, if you don't like this company or they don't provide enough information and like plan for the trip, you can find another company that has like more stops and like you, you get to stop at like cave and see something and this is the one that we went yeah, to. Don't be afraid to shop around. Yes. We're, we will have a whole video about the trip that we actually booked while we were in Kerfu and it was so amazing. So this is coming up. In Corfu, there were beaches that were not accessible mm -hmm. um, on the, by mainland. You had to take a boat or a really intense hike. Um, that was so, very headache because like you planned everything. You get up early, you have your breakfast and you start rolling to go to that beach. And you're super excited and then ends up, sorry, it's windy. You cannot yeah, go. if it's too windy, then you cannot take a boat to go to yeah. that beach. So one, you could be prepared to do a pretty uh, intense hike, which yes. is okay if that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. um, two, you would have to check what days are windy and go very, very early in the morning <laughs> in order to get the boats while they're running before the wind picks up in the day. Yep. Um, otherwise, there are plenty of other beaches. When we would get to a beach that we couldn't get to by boat, there were other options and other mainland beaches that were easy to get to that were still 
Beautiful. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, after an hour and a half of driving, um, the road, the Cape Trastis, Cape Trastis, is closed because of the waves. Actually, it wasn't. I don't really believe it. It was. Yeah. It was very, very small waves. But yeah, it was calm. Just, I think it's just because responsibility wise, you're scared. And we've encountered that a lot on this trip. Yeah. So if you want to get to beaches that are hard to go to, you need to go very early in the day before the wind picks up. Otherwise, just be okay with going to a mainland beach, not yep. a not a, not a beach you need a boat to. Yep. But we got a cool picture from up there. Mm -hmm. was so the pretty. view was beautiful. The drive was really cool. Yeah. So it, it is really worth it to drive all the way up here. Mm -hmm. The roads were super fun to drive. Number six is a application for travel. So as of 2024, travelers coming from the US and other countries into the EU are going to have to file a traveler's application. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as a visa's visa um, process, which is usually more intense. Yeah. This one is completely online and should take, um, I think they said less than 30 days. So when you're booking your flight, you could book this application too. They and said still also get to it's gonna going. cost seven euros. Yeah, so the cost is seven euros and the application is actually good for three years. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you stay in the EU up to 90 days within a 180 day period. So it's just like entering mm. right now with our visas. Yes. We also, or with our passports. We get to go in and stay up to 90 days currently, but now in 2024, you have to file online. It's an extra step and it's inconvenient, but at least you know about it and you're not gonna yes. show up to the airport without this application. <laughs> but this is only for Americans because I had to go through a whole another process to get the visa to Greece. Yes. <laughs> but I have my, it's still an Egyptian passport and my Egyptian nationality, so. Uh, this is a whole other story, and I have to pay 80, 80 euros or eighty dollars to get the visa. But however, this is this information is only for Americans. Um, so uh, it's called E T I A S. It's an acronym for their application. So just Google that online, and you'll find the application to be able to fill out um, in order to in order to travel. Yes, and we'll, we will try to search for that and get this link for you guys and put it under the video. So it will make it easier that you can just click on it. Couch surfing, this is my favorite application. I just love this app. So you create your profile on couch surfing. Couch surfing is an app. You can meet people that can host you for free anywhere you go, anywhere in the world. And if you cannot find people to host you, or if you don't want to stay with people, you can also meet people, local people to show you around. For example, on our trip, we did stay in a hotel because it was our honeymoon, but we got connected through couch surfing to a local in Corfu who then showed us great food yes. and different events going on that were local and Giannis, cultural. Giannis, thank you so much and I love you because he helped us a lot on this trip. So couch surfing is a great app. Uh, I've been doing it since 2015, I think. Uh, in so many countries, in France, Thailand, uh, Ukraine, and then after we got married, I took Tessa with me into like places, states here. Yeah, we, within the U.S. Yes, we stayed in where? Texas. Texas. You stayed in uh, Colorado. Yes, in yes. 
So it was just, it's amazing. You get to meet people and like local people and they show you around and you build relationships. But I feel like you have to be a very open person to go and meet kind of strangers. You know, you don't know these people, but uh, you read their, their profile, you, read, you have like reference. When you stay with someone and then you leave, you both have to write references to each other. So yeah. that reference will stay forever on the application. So you cannot delete it. So if you stayed and that person was amazing and great and then you write all of this stuff about that person and then I try to go and like search for someone that I, I need to stay with and then I see their profile, I see your reference into that person. So I see, oh, that person is level and I can send him a request and, and see if he can post me. So that application is amazing. Yeah, it's definitely for outgoing people. Like yes. I probably wouldn't be able to do it alone because I'm shy and I would feel very awkward just like walking into someone's house. But Adam is so talkative and like you make friends so easily. It's definitely for people who want to make really good local connections. Yeah, and check that out. I'm, I'm gonna leave it down below. You can click on it. It's so easy to log in and you know, it's definitely an experience. You will enjoy it, trust me. That's it for our video today. We hope that you guys got all the information that we wanted to share with you and let us know down in the comment section if there's anything that you have a question about. We are definitely willing to help you and answer those questions. Until next time. Do you want to say anything to this one? Bye. <laughs>